Every Brazilian boy dreams of becoming a footballer, especially if he grows up in poverty and misery. Denilson's case is no exception. Denilson de Oliveira was born on August 24, 1977, in one of the most dysfunctional suburbs of Sao Paulo, Diadema. His family was impoverished and he had to work from an early age to earn money. Just before entering his teenage years, he joined the sports school of Sao Paulo. However, being forced to work to earn money to help his family, he often missed trainings. For a short period, Denilson even gave up attending the sports school altogether. At 15, his talent was noticed by then Sao Paulo FC coach, Tele Santana, and he was invited to train with the first team. Denilson signed his first professional contract soon after, and the club also bought a house with Denilson's parents and even found jobs for them. That was a turning point in his career. After the family's financial problems were resolved, he could finally focus on what he adored football. Denilson primarily played as a left winger but was also used as a second striker or centre forward on some occasions. His stronger foot was his left and he was described as a technically gifted player with a unique vision of the game. Denilson was one of the most renowned dribblers of his time and infamous for his inability in front of the goal. In fact, one of his dribbling skills is still popular nowadays and it's even named after him, the step over known as the Denilson. This is a spectacular feint, used to fool the opposing player into thinking the player with the ball will move in a direction they do not expect him to move in. The Brazilian made his professional debut in the first team of Sao Paulo FC in the quarterfinals of the Comibol Cup against Peruvian club Sporting Cristal SA on November 16, 1994, when he was just a 17-year-old teenager. In this first match for him as a professional, he also scored his first goal, and Sao Paulo FC eventually won 3-1. Juninho entrou, desequilibrou o jogo, decidiu a partida e também agora no, no, nesse jogo contra o Grêmio, a hora que precisou da entrada dele, ele entrou e foi muito útil para o time, para os dois times. The club ultimately won the Comibol Cup of that season, drawing the return match with the Peruvians beating Corinthians in a dramatic Brazilian fight in the semi-finals and in the final being stronger than Penarol. The following season started more than perfect for Denilson. He established himself in the main squad, scoring five goals and attracted the manager's attention of the Brazilian national youth team. In April 1995, he was called up for the World Under-20s Championship in Qatar. Once again, demonstrating his mesmerizing speed and technique. Denilson took part in four games as a substitute, but started in the final. However, the Brazilian side lost 2-0 to Argentina. His club team's performance, Sao Paulo FC, was the exact opposite though. Although Denilson shone on the pitch, the club was heavily underachieving. Some of the most notable players like Rai, Cafu, and Juninho Palista left the club, and the team faced a severe crisis and problems with the organization of the team. Sao Paulo FC performed mediocre between 1995 and 97, finishing 12th, 11th, and 12th respectively. However, these circumstances had little effect on Denilson's game, and he continued to progress and develop his skills. On November 13th, 1996, Denilson de Oliveira debuted in the Brazilian senior team in a 2-0 win against Cameroon in a friendly match. The legendary Mario Zagallo picked him for the squad and put him in the starting 11. The young winger impressed everyone, and just two months later, he was part of the Brazil squad for the 1997 FIFA Confederations Cup. 
where Danielson grabbed the standing ovations for his performances. Brazil won the Confederations Cup and he was chosen as the best player in the tournament, getting awarded with the Golden Ball Trophy. This was the most significant individual achievement in his career. He performed superbly, supporting attacks from the left flank and often making darting runs directly at goal by himself. He was swift and skillfully beat his opponents one on one. That same year in June, Danielson also won the 1997 Copa America with the national team. He played at a world class level and contributed significantly to the team's success. He played five times out of six and scored two goals. His first for the senior national team in the semi finals against Peru in the very first minute of the game, initiating the 7 0 win and then the first goal of three goals for the Brazilians in the victorious final against Bolivia, 1-3-1. His solid performance for the national team made him the new Brazilian wonder kid and attracted major interest from top European clubs. Not surprisingly, he was selected in the South American Team of the Year of 1997 alongside his compatriot Edmundo. Transfer rumours around the Brazilians started to intensify at the end of 1997. Despite the massive interest by numerous leading European clubs, it was Spanish mid-table club Real Betis Balompier that surprisingly bought Danielson with a contract signed for 11 years. This deal easily broke the world record transfer fee when his new team paid £21 million for his services. It was £2 million more than what Internazionale paid for the iconic Ronaldo a year before. The directors of Betis were so confident in the star potential of their new signing that they gave him a contract worth around £40,000 per week, a huge salary in the 90s. Para que se la quiten, tienen que cerrar un banco. Manuel Ruiz de la Pera, then president of Betis, was truly enthralled with the dazzling footwork of the Brazilian and the potential for him to turn the team into title contenders. Following his tremendous performances with Brazil, Mario Zagallo picked Danielson for the 1998 FIFA World Cup squad. Just before that, the left winger provided another spectacular performance in the CONCACAF Gold Cup while also contributing to Sao Paulo's Campeonato Paulista triumph. The Brazil coach stated that he was a remarkable player who could do the unexpected, suddenly changing the game. To prove him right, Danielson shone again and showed his talent at the World Cup as a sub in almost every match. He was playing confidently and creatively, making two assists on the way to the World Cup final. Still, he could not prevent Brazil's loss in the final to France. On a club level, Danielson made his European debut on August 29, 1998, in a nil-nil away draw against Deportivo Alaves. Batiste was clearly not expected to make such a transfer. They desired to be a true contender in Spain, and the club invested a lot to make it happen. Danielson established himself at the club, but he could not adapt to Spanish football in the first season. It was far from great. With 35 games and just two goals, as Batiste finished in 11th position. His stock fell soon after becoming the world's most expensive footballer. He most certainly did not live up to the expectations due to media and public pressure of the world record transfer fee. Moreover, at the end of the 1999 2000 campaign, Batiste was relegated. Over his first two seasons with the club, Danielson found the net just five times, and the winger was hastily loaned to Flamengo in Brazil, where he also could not find his form, playing only 19 games in six months. In December 2000, he returned to Betis and was one of the pivotal players on their path to return to the top flight. Still, in his seven years with the club, Danielson never registered more than three league goals in a season. His renowned tricks and things were simply not translating into points for his team. And what followed for the Brazilian was a nomadic, odd, 
an ultimately short career. Bueno, yo como he estado jugando en un equipo que, que me han tratado con muchísimo cariño, con muchísimo, con muchísimo amor, eh, siempre se lo voy a decir eh, el, el del Betis, esto está muy claro. His last season in Betis was 2004-05, when his team achieved fourth position, qualifying for the UEFA Champions League and winning the Copa del Rey. But Danielson was already a backup player, playing only 290 minutes in the entire season. The winger was transferred to French side Bordeaux, four years before his 11-year Betis contract was due to expire because of his high salary and poor performance. The transfer fee was not revealed, and on August 24, 2005, his Spanish adventure was officially over. Premier but in France, a moment important. Si, pour moi, premier, premier but. Danielson had a good season at Bordeaux, finishing second in the French Championship and playing in the starting lineup. Bueno, fue una jugada. Una jugada eh, rápida, ¿no? Eh, una acción rápida. Una, una acción rápida. But did not stay for the next season in France, unable to find an agreement with the club's management, who did not want to make concessions to the player on wages. As a result, in the summer of 2006, the Brazilian maestro found himself without a club. He finally signed for Saudi Arabia's Al Nasir FC. His form continued to decline and he spent disappointing one-year periods in FC Dallas, Palmeiras, Itambiara, and Vietnamese club Haiphyeong FC. In January 2010, Danielson signed a two-year contract with Cavalier in Greece, but did not play a single match for them. And just three months later, he decided to retire from professional football. Despite his mediocre performances for Betis, he was selected for the 2002 World Cup squad by manager Luis Felipe Scolari. Danielson played five matches, all as a substitute, recording a single minute in the final against Germany. Despite not contributing that much, winning the World Cup was his most considerable success at a national level. He earned a total of 61 caps for his country, scoring eight goals. Looking back at the career of the former wonder kid, it's hard to tell whether Danielson would have flourished or floundered in today's world of football, but his legacy will always be the magical football tricks that are still performed nowadays by global superstars like Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar.